Hello, my good human. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you've been around here for a while, it's good to have you back. I'm Luana Rose from LuanaRose.com, nervous system specialist. And here on my channel, I talk about all things nervous system regulation, trauma healing, and relationship health. This video is dedicated to teaching you about the function of the autonomic nervous system. It's brief. If you want to dive deeper, go over to luanarose.com and you can always dive deeper in my courses there and my one-on-one -on -one sessions. What is the autonomic nervous system? So it's actually part of the peripheral nervous system and you may have heard of the spinal nerves or the cranial nerves back here which are part of the peripheral nervous system as well and kind of govern our five senses. So the autonomic nervous system is responsible for the functions of our sleep-wake cycles, digestion, metabolism, our immune system, temperature of our body, things like blinking, anything that happens automatically and we don't have to think about doing in our everyday life. All those automatic functions our body does. Our autonomic nervous system is made up of three parts. Our sympathetic nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system, and our social engagement system. For the sake of keeping this video brief, I'm going to talk about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, and I'm leaving the social engagement system to a whole other video because it's juicy and it needs its own video. So what's the difference between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system? These two different parts or branches of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the one that gets us up, it gets us going. Right now I'm standing up, it allows my muscles to be engaged to a certain extent and my fascia to be engaged and going so that I don't fall over and melt into the floor. So that is the sympathetic nervous system. It gets us up, gets us going, and it's that fight or flight part of our stress response, which I'll talk more about later. So our parasympathetic nervous system is the part of us that kind of down regulates from that get up and go. It helps us rest and digest and come into a nice juicy place for rejuvenation and regeneration. Its job is to slow things down and it's a little bit more complex than just rest and digest and also more complex than the sympathetic nervous system. So the more complex part of the parasympathetic nervous system that most folks kind of miss out but I'm not going to oversimplify this because it's super important, is the part of the parasympathetic nervous system that is in charge of our conservation physiology, our shutdown mode. If I am playing tennis and I break my hand, the part of the conservation mode shut down, part of the parasympathetic nervous system, will have these mechanisms to help my hand go a bit numb so that it numbs the pain so that it's not overwhelming. And if I'm bleeding, I scratch my hand, those same beautiful mechanisms of my body will help the blood and the tissues kind of constrict so that I don't bleed all over the place. So that's part of the conservation mode or the shutdown mode of the parasympathetic nervous system. It's numbing and it can constrict blood flow, for example. This is our body's way of organically protecting itself. So this same shutdown conservation mode of the parasympathetic nervous system will come on board if, let's say, a child grows up with constant abuse or even neglect at home. This shutdown conservation mode will come online to protect the child from feeling an overwhelming sense of sadness, hurt, um, despair. So when bad things happen in life over and over and over again, this conservation shutdown physiology is right here to protect us and it'll come on board and we'll start to feel numb to more bad things happening. So it's actually a really smart design for ourselves to protect ourselves. And this part of our parasympathetic nervous system is, if we think about the sympathetic as being fight, flight, the parasympathetic is freeze and fawn. So if constantly bad things are happening in life, we're going to walk around in a functional freeze state. We're going to be functional, but our 
function all the way down to our blood cells and our veins and our organs is going to be functioning in a conservation mode, so functioning minimally. So there will be less oxygen flow to our cells and therefore our organs. So over time, this can be very detrimental to a human's well-being and cause serious long-term health conditions because there's less oxygen and blood flow to organs, the brain, even to our limbs and different parts of our body. When we talk about fight, flight, freeze, fawn, we're talking about the autonomic nervous system, that response to stress, threat, or perceived threat that happens subconsciously, automatically. So let's look at a few ways that the threat response affects our body through this automatic, autonomic response. So when we look at the adrenals, the adrenal glands will dump large amounts of adrenaline to provide the body with extra strength needed to fight, flight, or even freeze from whatever is scaring or threatening to hurt the individual. Uh, when we go to the digestive system, that thirst and hunger, it shuts that down because the body is not going to take the time to eat or eliminate a hamburger, let's say, if a scary, bad, or hurtful situation is happening. The pancreas, when we go to the pancreas, it begins this rapid burn of sugar in the blood, and this is to provide the body with the quick energy needed to fight or fight from something that's scary or triggering. And when I say triggering, it can be like triggering relationally. It can be in an unsafe relationship. The muscles of the jaw tighten to prevent the lower jaw from being torn off in a attack or a trauma, and the body is aware that without the lower jaw we cannot chew food, which is essential for our survival. Over time, if we're stuck in a stress response because crappy things happened early on in life or they keep happening, then our sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system are going to be working over time or they're going to be misfiring. What's supposed to happen with the autonomic nervous system is the sympathetic rises to mobility, takes us into action, the parasympathetic is supposed to come in and meet it and down regulate it. Then we have these beautiful waves going on. But if accumulated stress, accumulated bad things happen, we're going to get stuck either in the go, go, go mode of always being on in that sympathetic nervous system, or we're going to be functioning in a functional freeze, a functional conservation mode, as I explained earlier, or we can swing between both. So this is why the autonomic nervous system is so important to understand when we're curious about learning about ourselves as humans and healing our mind, body, and spirit, and of course relationships. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding the basics on the autonomic nervous system. I kept it brief. If you'd like to dive deeper, check out the other videos on my channel or go over to luanarose.com and jump into the resources there. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications, and I will see you next time.